there's a real cure for addiction. You want to hear the cure? Build a wall, stop the flow of drugs, and make drug dealing a, de a death sentence with one appeal. That'll dry up the supply. I'm sick and tired of hearing about treatment. If it really worked, they wouldn't go in and out of treatment. They go, they spend. It's a sad thing. Look, no one's laughing at addicts. You can get addicted from a, a, a an injury. You could have a, like a spinal thing and need a, you know, oxy. I told you the answer. Stop making Oxycontin to start with. They should arrest the owners of the company that make that stuff. It's the most toxic drug ever invented. Do I have to tell you the story again? Because I know a little bit from pharmacology, my years in pharmacology. There was such a severe addiction to morphine at the turn of the last century. People were knocking it down in every form imaginable. Tinctures, morphine. They relaxed people. 1880, 90, 1905. They were giving it to babies in a tincture. Baby cried, give it morphine. Baby was hurting from teething. <laughs> they rubbed morphine on the, t on, the, on, the, on, the, on the gum. Quieted the baby down. Turned her into a junkie, but okay, it worked. That way mommy can get some rest. Just give the baby some morphine, she'll be fine. They didn't call it morphine then. They called it, uh, they had names for it. Tincture this, tincture that. Little baby stop crying formula. Shut the kid up formula. But they used it on, on infants. They didn't know it was bad. It worked. See, those days, they didn't have, like, a moral thing around. It's like, oh, that stuff works. The baby stopped crying. And that stuff works. All of my itises went away. My feet don't hurt. My hands don't hurt. I feel better. Let's use that stuff. It's great. Woo. Terrific stuff, that morphine. So everyone was, was so much addiction for morphine that it became a public outcry, like stop the morphine addiction. So they went to the geniuses in the uh, chemistry area, and they said, well, can you invent something that, We'll get them off morphine. Yeah, don't worry about it. We'll come up with it. Into the lab they go. Test tubes, Frankenstein, lab equipment. Here it is, the magical formula. You see, we took morphine, and we added two acetyl groups to the morphine molecule. We have 3,6-diacetyl morphine. I don't know what it is, but it works, right? Yeah, it's called heroin. That's how, that's how heroin was, was made. So then, you know the story of heroin. So now heroin's so addictive... That they come up with the next one, methadone, worse than heroin. Now they come across, now they invent OxyContin, worse than methadone and heroin put together, addicting an entire generation. So who's responsible for it? Uh, hello, cash register, bottom line. Who makes it? Look up the company that makes it. If you had a government of the people, by the people, and for the people, don't you think that they would have stopped the manufacture of Oxy and made the manufacture of it illicitly punishable by the death penalty? And the story, no appeals. One appeal and you're going to jail for life or you're going to be executed if you make that stuff. It's killing our children. So the government, though, okay, they're looking the other way. They get a payoff and a campaign donation. They get a vacation at a resort in Texas 300 miles from the border where there's no phones, and no coroners, you know. And if they don't play ball, they uh, have a, a heart attack in the bed as a result of a pillow that fell down. We don't know where the pillow, like a fairy pillow. It was under his head. It was over his head first. It was on his face. I didn't mean it was on his head. It was on the headboard. I didn't mean his head. Oh, I see, sir. Can you explain that again to the American people? They're a little concerned that you reported that Justice Scalia was found with a pillow over his face. Okay, no, he was found with a pillow on the headboard, not on his head. Oh, 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 headboard, not head. See that? See, idiots? See, morons? You jumped at the conspiracy theory because you listened to those shows. It was on the headboard, not on his head. <laughs> Anderson, what do you have to say? I have to say this. Mr. Bush, what's your favorite music? <laughs> and on we go. Oh, then it's ski week. On to the ski vacation last week. There's like ghost town in the suburbs in, the, in California. You couldn't see a white person. Uh, on the, on the, you couldn't, didn't see a white person under 5,000 feet unless they had a regular job. The children were off the streets. It was unbelievable. Not a child was seen. It's like all day was skiing. Everybody was skiing for a week. I think they're back in school already. Thank God. Where are? What do they do for a whole week up there? God, it's over the ski week. They're going to learn something this year. Maybe they'll learn something by July fourth. They'll learn what a peninsula is. In the in the twelfth grade, that is. This state used to be number one in everything education wise. One of the reasons I loved living here when I was poor. I came here in seventy four. I didn't have much money. I was a grad student. Uh, I, I, 74, then I had one child and I had two later on and I felt good. I knew that they could go to college for free and I knew the University of California system was the best in the country. It had it was such high ratings, so many Nobel Prize winners 
And I said, you know what? I'm going to leave it up to my kids to be what they want. They can go to the Cal system, University of California, or the state system. Either, either one's fine. Both of my kids went to the Cal state system. They both did very well because they worked hard. And I figured, let them send themselves through college. You know, I paid for the, the uh, room and board and tuition. But enough to no, not it wasn't very low. Whatever it wasn't out of town school, like thirty grand to learn how to score coke in a ghetto. They didn't they didn't get that benefit, and then go on into a government job or work for a, you know, a Wall Street corporation where they met somebody from General Motors uh, uh, Finance Corporation, <laughs> sub finance corporation. But I'm saying used to be number one. Then what happened? Take a look at it now. Look at the look at the sad sack system now. Look at what Jerry Brown has allowed to happen to our once pristine educational system. Look how many days the kids are not in school. Look at the idiotic courses that they pass as college courses. Take a look at the idiots they let create departments for themselves. They're not smart enough to teach a regular department. They create a, they create a whole study about themselves. And they give each other like scholarly papers. I love how they use scholarly terms to describe their courses. A rigorous investigative approach to the expense of fungal nail polish. I'll be back in a minute. It is the Savage Nation. Now, today's theme, I have to spell it out for you, is Trump, you're in a Sandman. That's what I said two hours ago. I cannot believe two hours went by already without a, a single call. I didn't take a call because I started out tired from the allergies killing me. And within a few seconds, the adrenaline and the, the sheer joy of walking on the tightrope and doing what I do the way I do it so enervated me that it's almost uh, two hours into the show already. How is this possible? Well, whatever. So we're talking about is Trump your inner Sandman. I, I warned you that Obama was your inner Sandman. And look what happened with him. So no one's going to be your inner Sandman. You better find your own inner Sandman. That's a good book title. I just gave away another bestseller. There are the, well, other people wrote it down. They were sent off proposals already before I finished. They call an agent. Hello, how are you, John? Listen, I have an idea for a book about Sandman inside. Really? Uh, put something together, a couple of paragraphs. I'll get you $200,000 for that one. Uh -huh. I got to be careful because I give out too many things for nothing on the Savage Nation. Well, look, these hours are gone. There's another big hour. Sorry you don't get it in your market. If you don't, I can't help you. I can only do what I do. All the news, views, and reviews you've come to expect from Michael Savage. In the next hour, we will talk about was Scalia murdered and is Apple right or the FBI right? Right here on the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation. Talk radio for the thinking person, home of borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. What a beautiful song. Does anyone fall in love anymore? Can anyone fall in love in this cynical world? I don't know. I don't know anymore. What a world. I'm sure. Come on. People are born. They go through the same cycle. I have a granddaughter. She's two years old. What an innocent, beautiful person. I look at her and I wonder what kind of world she's going to live in. I say to myself, man, you better do everything you can. You better work real hard. You better work real hard to make sure that the Witch of Warwick doesn't win. Now that Bernie the Stooge is out of the box. Welcome to the Savage Nation. Just thinking out loud a little bit. If you just joined the show, I pity you because you missed everything that was good. The rest is uh, just... We're going to do a lot of calls in this hour. News, views, reviews. Saw an interesting article that I'm going to read about now, uh, talk with you about. China is buying up American companies fast, and it's freaking people out. Business Insider, Porsche Crow, they're buying up everything because we have a sick country run by criminals who should stop these sales, by the way. This should be against the law. You know, Canada does not permit foreigners 
to buy more than 20 acres of land, of, uh, of uh, wheat land. Do you know that? Uh, about five years ago, I looked into buying farmland in Canada. And as an American, I could only buy 20 acres. China's coming and buying 10,000 acres of our wheat, 20,000 acres of our corn, 100,000 acres of our soybeans. What kind of nation permits this when it's run by gangsters and criminals and lobbyists and lawyers who are the worst of all of them? Do you know what they're buying? They want to buy the Chicago Mercantile Exchange. Did you hear any of this? General Electric sold its appliance business to a Chinese company. Uh, Chem China's record-breaking deal for the Swiss Seeds and Pesticide Group, Syngenta, valued at $48 billion. You think they're stupid? They're buying our farmland. They're buying our seeds. They're buying our pesticides. In other words, they can starve us to death. Obama's for you, though. Don't worry about that man. He's watching the store. In between hole three and four, he's watching the store. See, I hope if Trump becomes president, he kicks them out of our country, doesn't let him do this. He's, oh, you bought the company? Now take a walk, and you, we're keeping the money, and you don't, owe, you don't own it. That's all. Goodbye. Go back where you came from. Are you kidding me? They're buying up our whole infrastructure here. Most recently, a unit of the Chinese conglomerate H&A Group said it would buy the technology distributor Ingram Micro for six bill. Chicago Stock Exchange going to another Chinese company. 102 Chinese mergers and acquisitions deals amounting to $81 billion in value. That's up from 72 deals worth $11 billion in the same period last year. Why are they doing it? Because it's slow economic growth in China, cheap prices abroad, not so much due to the stock market's recent sell-off, but because the Chinese are manipulating their currency, just like Donald Trump says. They're manipulating their currency. And now they're using that to come in and buy up our entire nation. So uh, the uh, operators, oh, with the slowdown of the economy, Chinese corporates are increasingly looking to inorganic venues, avenues to supplement their growth. What kind of nonsense is that? Only a sick nation sells off its infrastructure. So now they want to buy the, the stock exchange. That's really great. Let them invest now, and they can have access to the $2 trillion U.S. equity marketplace, just what the doctor ordered. That's all. So we have a group called CIFUS, C-F-I-U-S. Any company that has anything to do with national security has to go through this group. Yeah, right. Yeah, <laughs> some group that is. I wonder if you could pay them off. You can imagine what you can get through them, CIFUS. CIFUS, CIFUS, CIFUS. Oh, sorry, I can make a joke about that. Early this week, California-based Fairchild Semiconductor refused an offer from the state-backed China Resources and Capital, the Financial Times reported. They bid $2.6 bill for the company, but Fairchild tur turned it down, citing concerns about U.S. regulators and accepted a lower bid from U.S.-based rival. Good for them. It wasn't They didn't do it out of t patriotism, I guarantee you. It's because they knew that the deal with the U.S.-based company would go through, while the one with China would be scrutinized. Well, it should be. The deals are awesome. You, you can't talk about it because it's too big. You can't do anything about it. That's why you're not calling on it, 855-407. What can you say about that? Nothing. Not, what can you say? Nothing. If I asked you whether you like chocolate ice cream better or vanilla, the lines would light up. That you can answer. Now, it's not that there's something wrong with you. What can you say about China buying companies? Nothing. What could you say about Mark Zuckerberg worth $48 billion wearing an undershirt? Is that a sartorial statement or an, an example of stupidity? What is he doing that for? To show how powerful he is? Naturally, he came down on the side of his, his buddies at uh, Apple. They're all one and the same. I told you they need to be broken up. I told you any new president's got to break them up, bust, bust the trust. I, I'm sorry, they're too big. They're too big for the sake of the average American. Apple needs to be broken up. You name, name the number one competitor to, to Apple. Go ahead. Name the number one competitor to Facebook. Tell me what market share they have. Name the number one competitor to Google. Tell me the market share they have, the next search engine. You can't. Name the next competitor, the num number two competitor to Microsoft. You can't. Tell me what percent of the market they own. By any definition, each of these companies, in my estimation, is running a monopoly. And there used to be antitrust violations in this country. There was a vigorous Justice Department that was interested in more than racial harassment. And the Justice Department used to prevent companies from growing too big because they knew it's, it's the stifled competition. And the, the, the whole lifeblood of capitalism is competition, isn't it? These are not capitalist countries. Uh, sorry, these are not capitalist countries by definition. They are, they are entities unto themselves. They're nations unto themselves. Facebook's revenue is bigger than most nations. Google's revenue is bigger than most nations. 
Certainly Microsoft's revenue is bigger than, than most nations in Europe, let's say. 